Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs and welcome to this video tutorial. We are talking about ClickUp today and we're talking about how we can, with our virtual assistant, utilize some really awesome features within ClickUp to automate our entire process flow. I'm gonna give you a few specific examples today. We're actually gonna be using ClickUp as our CRM, which if you didn't know it could do that, it certainly can. It's a really cool tool for that. So I'm gonna show you exactly how we do that, again, with our virtual assistant and with being able to set up some templates to help out our automation. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna to go to a sample CRM list that I have here, okay? So again, if you haven't thought about using ClickUp as a CRM, it's a pretty nice tool, okay? And so what I've done already is we kind of say that each task is our maybe our new opportunity. So if you think about this in the context of maybe I'm flipping or I'm doing um, renovations, okay? These addresses are my potential opportunities or my leads, right? And then over here I have my different stages, okay? And I could click and drag um, an item to move it through a different stage. I could do all of that, okay? Um, and ClickUp has so many different views that I could I could see things either in uh, board view or I could see things in list view like I'm doing right now. So um, it's a really cool tool for that, right? So here's my board view. I can click and drag things throughout my pipeline, okay? But that being said, I wanna demonstrate how we can use automation. So when it comes to a CRM, what I like to do is, there's a lot of rules that we kinda of know in our head, but we have to teach our system, and sometimes our system can't be taught that, but ClickUp certainly can be, and we can do that with automation. So there's a few examples I wanna teach you today. They're all really simple automations, but uh, one would be a follow-up aging type uh, calculation. So I have this aging calculation that I've already created within ClickUp, and it's a relatively simple um, formula where I'm just saying I want to count the days from the stage date to today. That's really what it's doing. And so my stage date is right here. And what I want that field to represent is the date at which I change stages. So if I bring something from uh, pre-qualified to estimate, I'm changing the stage. I want that stage date to update to today. Now I could, as a human being, go in here and click today's date. I could do that. But what we've learned in doing this many, many years is that we're gonna fail uh, at the human stage. So can we build it into the system that the system knows when my stage date changes? Now, if you were to use some kind of out-of-the-box CRM, chances are they have that kind of feature already, right? That's Great, and that's fine, but they probably don't have all the customizable features that ClickUp has, right? So it's kind of like if we like what we're doing within ClickUp, and I personally love it, um, can we can we mirror those you know out of the box features that CRMs have, and we can do some of that with automation. So what I want to do is I want to demonstrate for you how we can, when we move stages, automatically populate the stage date with today. Really, really simple automation. Let's get into it. So I'm going to go up here to automate, and I'm going to click automate, I'm gonna add automation. And here we have our triggers when this happens. So this is gonna say, this is the condition that our automation will run, and this is what's gonna happen. Okay, this is then do this action, okay? So many of you are used to this with things like Zapier. ClickUp is building a lot of this internally, which is awesome, okay? <clears throat> so in this case, I don't wanna change the status necessarily. I have a custom field to indicate my stages, okay? Now you could use status as your stages if you want to. It's just, this is the way that I've set this up. So I have custom field changes and I want that uh, field to be stage. So when my stage changes from uh, anything to anything, really, that's it. That's the condition. Really when the stage changes at any point in time, then this is what I wanna do. I want to change a custom field. So I'm gonna set custom field in which field do I want to change? And that is going to be my stage date, which is right here. I want to set my stage date on the trigger date. Pretty much as soon as I trigger this, I want to set the stage date. That's it. Okay, let's create that automation. Okay, and that's currently on. Okay, looks good for now. Let's try that out. Okay, so the last time I changed the stage of this 57, uh, let's do this 122 Buffalo Street. So the last time I changed the stage of 122 Buffalo Street was 410. Let's say I wanna move that from estimate to qualified. Now I can do that in one of two ways. I can open up the task and I can switch the stage right here, or I can click and drag. I can either click and drag from here or I can do it from the board, whatever. Now when I do that, 
I want to see if my stage date updates for 122 Buffalo. Let me just get out and in, and it did. Okay, so there's my stage date updates to today and my aging goes to zero, okay? So that's pretty cool, that's exactly what I wanna do. So this aging is telling me how long it's been in each of its stages. And then maybe I can make some rules about that. I could do some filtering, I could do some sorting, I can let that piece of information dictate how I operate moving forward. Okay, so that's one example of uh, an automation that we can do. Okay, another automation is what if, you know, this, if I create a new task, that stage date, I don't necessarily want to put it in. And so shouldn't we default that stage date when I create a new task to be today's date even when I create a new one? So if I were to say like create a new one, 123 Main Street, okay? And um, let's just say that's it for now. If I did 123 Main Street, it's gonna be added, but my stage date is going to be blank. Now, shouldn't it be today's date, right? Isn't that logical? Okay, the system doesn't know that though. So what I wanna do is I wanna build that into an automation as well. I'm gonna delete this one for now. Okay, so I wanna build that in, into an automation as well. So let's create another automation where when a task is created, and it can be created in this case by any source, which I think is typically fine, and definitely from this situation, then I all I wanna do is set that custom date, that stage date, again, to the trigger date, nice and simple. Just a really simple automation, okay? So let's create that one as well. <clears throat> so let's try that out. So let's do one, two, three, Main Street. Just put that in as a task. I want that to go in. Just usually takes a second. Let's see if it updates my stage date. It did, perfect, okay? So we got two really simple automations, really, really valuable as well. Okay, next thing I wanna do is we're gonna get a little bit more complicated here. So we're talking about using a VA. So what I like to do with my CRM is when we reach certain stages, I would like my VA to do some certain prep. So this is where we come into really super powering your VA. And your VA is not necessarily going to be doing sales for you, but your VA can certainly prep estimates and prep proposals, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna create an automation such that the way that I've set up this pipeline is when I move from new to pre-qualified, what we do in my business is we create an estimate. So we go from new to pre-qualified, we create an estimate. When we move from um, an estimate to qualified, we do a proposal, okay? And so every time we do that, there's work that goes into that and my VA is helping me prep that. So I'm gonna create an automation to give my VA a subtask to prep things when I move stages. Okay, so I'm gonna go to automations again. So when my stage changes, <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go custom field changes, and this is going to be a stage. When my stage changes from any to pre-qualified, so I'm, when I'm at the pre-qualified stage, I want to prep an estimate. That's my condition here, okay? I want to add this action. And this action is going to be to create a subtask, okay? The parent task, if I don't select, it should, and we're gonna test this, it should be the task or the opportunity that I'm working in, and I want that to be the case. Subtask name, I'm gonna grab the task's name, and I'm gonna say prep estimate as my task name. So I'm grabbing a variable, which is the task name, and I'm saying prep the estimate. Now I can use a template. Okay, I'm gonna do that without for now, and then I'm gonna change it to a template in a second. Status, I want it to start as open. Description, don't really need to put that in there. Priority, I'm gonna put as normal. Due date, I want it to be due two days after the trigger date. I'm gonna give my VA some time to prep it. Start date, I'm gonna leave that blank for now. Tags, I'm gonna leave off, and here I will assign it to my virtual assistant. Okay, now I could set custom field values if we wanted to, in this case, my subtasks don't really follow the same custom fields as needed there. So I'm gonna click create. Okay, so when I move a opportunity within my CRM to pre-qualified, I want to see that subtask be created. So let's move 264 union. And actually, let me show you it from the board view. So it should be the exact same, but I'm gonna click and drag it to pre-qualified. So I'm moving 264 union to pre-qualified. So that has in effect moved its stage to pre-qualified. 
And then when I click into 264 Union, not there yet, let's see. Still not there yet. It looks like it moved it back. Oh, I moved it back. All right, my bad. Okay, there it is. I'm not sure that was probably just a user. I was probably just refreshing it a little too soon, but there's my subtask, okay? So 264 union prep estimate is assigned to my VA and we bounce in here. We have the due date is two days from today. I'm recording this on Monday. All right, priority set is normal. Excellent, so that's like ready to go. Now, I could have included in the automation, let's go back to that automation. We can always edit our automations as well. So I'm gonna go back to this automation and um, whoops, that's the stage date one, sorry. Let's go back to this automation and I'm going to create the subtask, here it is, okay. Um, so here I could put in the description, I could say like, um, here's how you do the task, right? Or what we should probably do is put a link to a Loom video, okay, to show her how to do the task. Okay, that allows us to train at the same time we are, you know, preparing our SOP. So if I grab a link to a video, I can put that in there. Okay, and save that. Okay, the other thing we could do is we could add an attachment. And to do that, we'd probably want to make use of a template. And I've actually prepped one. So um, let me show you that. So if I go to uh, create a subtask here, instead of... Uh, just having these other fields, I could also select a template. And I've got this project estimate template that I've already kind of prepped. So I'm gonna use the project estimate template and I'm gonna have that description there. So let's see if this one works. So if I move anything to pre-qualified, we should have that template. And I think that template has a task in there. So let's move 123 Main Street over. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time this time to kind of churn. It just takes like a second or whatever, um, but it's all going on in the background. All right, so there it is right there, 123 Main Street Prep Estimate. And now, look, I have my video tutorial is built in and uh, I didn't attach the attachment to my template, but I should have. Uh, the other thing I wanted to demonstrate, I didn't have it in there, is, is you could also on your template, you can establish um, having attachments in there. So now how do you how do you save as a template? I didn't show you that part, but once you have a task kind of how you want it and ready to save as a template, you can just go to the, the task here and go template center and go save as template and it'll, it'll do that for you, okay? Um, but you can see what we're able to do is we can build in that training and so that all that stuff automatically happens. When I move it to pre-qualify, it's gonna give that task to uh, assign to the VA. The other thing we could do is we can uh, copy our automation. So I have a similar task that when I move from estimate to pre, uh, I'm sorry, estimate to qualified, we're going to prep the proposal. So I can take that automation that I've already built, that subtask, I can duplicate it, and that allows me to save a lot of this info. So now when my custom stage changes from stage, not to pre qualified, but to qualified, then I'm going to do this stuff. In this case, I'm going to not use a template. Okay, um, I'll keep that same thing in there, even though it's gonna be different. Two days later is fine, uh, but now I'm gonna call it, instead of it uh, being a prep estimate, it's gonna be prep proposal. And I can duplicate it, and there it is. Okay, so now when something moves from estimate to qualified, uh, we're gonna get a subtask there for my VA as well. You can see that that subtask showed up. So there's my prep proposal. It's got that video in there, okay? So that automation's working really well. Uh, I'll show you one last one. So something that I started to do, and again, CRMs do a really good job at this, is um, follow-up tasks <clears throat> and like next actions. So I started thinking about how I can have um, follow-ups show up kind of on this, this um, item here, okay? Now, I've already created this filter where it's pretty much anything that's assigned to me. So the way that I operate my CRM is these 
opportunities are not assigned to me. I'm the only salesperson, at least in my business, right? So therefore I don't need to assign these tasks for me. So I've created this filtered view to be like anything that is assigned to me. And the way that I'm doing this is when I create a follow-up action, like let's say I wanted to follow up as a next action here on this one. In my head, I would like to then have a subtask created and assigned to me and do on a certain date. Okay, that's what I'd like to have happen. And when that happens, then my follow-up tasks is going to be populated with the things I need to do. But can't we use automation for that as well? So if I go back here, when I move something to say follow-up, let's create a subtask assigned to me to do that follow-up. Okay, so again, back to the automations. I'm gonna add an automation here. When a custom field changes, that field is going to be next action. Oops. When next action changes from any to follow up, I am then going to create a subtask. And the subtask name is going to be task name and follow up. And template, I'm gonna leave blank for now. Status is gonna be open. Description is going to be follow up with contact. Maybe I bring in the contacts info. Uh, do I have that? Yeah. Let's see, do I have an email address? There's my phone number. So let's do that. Follow up with contact. Due date is uh, days after trigger date, let's say seven. Priority, let's make this high and assigned to myself. Okay, good, so I have that automation ready. So let's test that out. Let's go into this lead here. Let's make sure I have a phone number. Okay, and let's take this and do next follow-up for 123 Main Street. Let me just populate some of this stuff here. Okay, so let's say I want to follow up. What I want this to do is create a subtask assigned to me uh, due seven days from now to follow up. So there's the task that got created, due seven days from now. I open up the task and there is my contact info. All right. So what we're able to do is take all this cool stuff that like a lot of CRMs have out of the box and mix it with the huge customizability of ClickUp. You can see that I have project type and source and we need all this slicing and dicing of the data. We can use a map, which is super cool. Um, I can display all my projects on a map. Uh, we can do all sorts of filtering and timelines and it's kind of just unlimited what we could do with ClickUp. And, and so I really value that. And if I can get those small little things out of uh, the CRM, uh, then I'm getting kind of the best of both worlds and I encourage you to try to do the same. All right. So this is kind of an intro to automations within ClickUp. You can tell by the list of options on how we can automate. There's so many different things we can do. So we're going to get into plenty more. We're going to get into customizations and different calculations and logical um, uh, interpretations as well. But you can see how this with your VA, you can really work out a really good system where your VA is helping you prep things, your VA is helping you with follow-ups, and then you as the salesperson, as the business owner, are coming through and bringing it home. All right. So I'd like to hear your comments on this. If you're using ClickUp or if you're using something else and you have some ideas or thoughts, can you do this? How would you do that? Throw them in the comments here. Um, be sure to check out the new course we have available as well called Super VA, How to Find, Hire, and Superpower Your Virtual Assistant. And as always, check out all the free resources we have on IncomeDigs.com, and I'll see you on the next video.